Min's Brain Builder Diary presents How to Travel Through Time. What's going on, Miss Broussard's second grade class? I want to start today by asking you a question. Can you travel through time? <laughs> Weird question, I know. But that's the question I had the other day when my babysitter Tamara came over after school. Reading coach extraordinaire Tamara reporting for duty. Uh -huh. Oh no! Min, how long did you stay up reading that long book your aunt wrote? Ugh, not long. I got maybe 50 words in before I wanted to take a nap. Remember what I told you about the science of reading. Our brains start out great at listening and talking and at seeing and recognizing. But reading asks us to do even more than that. We have to do all those things and also connect to the printed words. And that doesn't come naturally to humans. It can be a lot to dive right into. You've got to walk before you run, right? Yeah, well, when it comes to reading, I can't even crawl yet. Hey, wait, Tamara. I just had the best idea. You said our brains are designed for listening, right? So why do we need to learn to read writing at all? Why doesn't everyone just say stuff? Then no one would have to learn to read. Now that is a good question. Hmm. So let's say I wanted to learn something from one of my ancestors. Someone in my family who lived years and years ago. So how would I ask her? I don't know. Turn a clock upside down and shout into it? Incredible instincts, but no. In fact, there's no easy way for me to do it just by speaking. My ancestor lived long ago, and spoken words disappear as soon as you say them. So there's no way for me to hear the words she said. See? Right now, you're hearing me speak. Okay, sure. And I remember what you said. So why do we need writing? Ah, but my words go away as soon as I've spoken them. So? I still remember what you said. Do you, though? Right now, you're shearing three sheep. Ugh. Maybe I don't remember exactly what you said. It was so long ago. That's why we have writing. Writing is a code for turning the sound words make into letters on a page. And then... When someone reads the letters you write, they turn back into sound again. That's why we have writing. And that lets us send messages to one another through time. Like your aunt is sending a message to you with your book. Get it? With writing, you know exactly what someone from the past said. And if you write something now, another person can read it later in the future and know just what you meant to say. Can you give me an example? Hmm. Okay. Let's say you ask someone to go shopping for you, but you don't write down a list. Are you sure they'll remember everything you said? That's one everyday advantage of written language. Another is just trading knowledge with people. With written language, you can exchange knowledge not just with people from the past and the future, but with people who live far away from you even people you've never met. What do you think of that? Um, I'm still thinking about time travel. That's amazing, but it's so complicated. It can be hard at first, but like anything, learning to read and write is just step by step. And of course, you'll have some help along the way. Hey, Tamara, do you still want to read me one of the stories in this book? Sure, buddy. Let's do some time travel together. Yes! First, can I write a letter to myself and send it to last week? I forgot my soccer shoes at my friend Chance's. 